What is going on everybody? We are coming to the end of our Launch Monitor Mastery Series. We're going to jump into number five, the final video of this series. Let's get to it. What's going on everybody? Scott Oden coming at you. We're here in the studio. We're gonna be going over this Launch Monitor Mastery number five in the series. Before we do that, make sure you click that subscribe button. Get nicer outside, get ready to head out and do some cool things. We're gonna be doing a lot on course and with some other ideas that we have as well. Again, helping you get better at your golf game. So you do not wanna miss out on that. And also we do have our $25 swinging analysis. Make sure you check that out in the link down below. Here we are, number five, the long awaited number five as we go through this. So let's recap. So far we have number one, low point. Number two, we have horizontal swing plane. Number three, vertical swing plane. Number four is gonna be centeredness of hit. And number five, drum roll please, is going to be club head speed, okay? So these again are gonna be the things that you can control when you're looking at your launch monitor numbers. You are actually having an influence on these and then they start kind of fanning their way out into all the other numbers to create those. So club head speed, is kind of an odd one i think when people first hear it they're like oh you know no kidding you got to be able to control you know how fast you go and that's obviously on me as we go however i think a lot of people kind of misunderstand club head speed as they go through because one they don't understand how to generate it first off two you know they think it's going to be harder than it is and also three they don't understand what club head speed does to the golf ball because there are a variety of ways that you want to control it to hit a variety of different shots. So let's start with that first, just like we always have. We're gonna start with what does club speed control? Okay, so when we're going to hit it, the first one's gonna be pretty obvious. As long as you're hitting the ball the same way, hitting it in the center of the face, you're gonna control how far the ball goes, the ball speed that comes off, right? Now, you factor in horizontal swing plane, you factor in your vertical swing plane, your spins, where's your low point, all that you're gonna get that carry yardage, but that ball speed is the initial thing that we're looking at is, hey, how fast does the ball come off is gonna be a direct correlation to how fast are you swinging it. So we wanna be able to get that number, first off, we wanna be able to push that number up as high as we can, and then two, we wanna be able to throttle it back when we need to. The second thing that it's going to control is it's gonna control your spin rates, okay? The faster you swing, the higher your swing, the faster you swing, the higher the spin rate's gonna go, okay? So this is where you'll hear some phrases like, hey, swing easy when it's breezy, some of these corny ones that you hear. Well, they do have a little bit of truth to them because when you're hitting, let's say, into the wind, and the wind is going to exaggerate your spin anyway, so you're gonna get a lot of backspin. You slice, you're gonna slice it more, you hook it, you're gonna hook it more you want to keep your spin rate down into the wind. So swinging easier will help you do that. So you might take more clubs, swing a little slower, try to keep that ball from ballooning on you or going in a crazy direction. Now, the last thing that it's going to affect your speed is going to be trajectory. So the slower I swing, it's a lot easier to keep the ball lower. If I swing harder, I can send it up and get the ball elevated. It's just like a plane taking off. I need speed for the ball to take flight. Same thing with a golf ball, all right? So you need to be able to do that, all right? So let's talk a little bit about a couple of things that I like to have people do when they want to work on their speed and control, you know, not only how fast they go, but also what they're gonna do with shots. So when we go to work on this speed thing, the first thing obviously is we like for people to realize that, hey, just trying to get as fast as possible, that's not a bad thing. Um, there's a reason golf has become a distance game. The farther you hit it, the better you can hit it and the, you know, all that. You can get the ball closer. The closer you get it to the hole, the easier it is to get the ball close to the hole, right? So not rocket science stuff there. My favorite by far has been the stack system. I've owned plenty of different trainings. You know, I have super speed, I've done Mach 3, you know, plenty of other things. The thing about getting your speed up is you have to treat it like it's a gym, right? So it's not practical to go into something and say, all right, hey, I'm just gonna bam, do something that's gonna increase your speed. Now, there are times when I'm working with students, we can get them to swing faster just from a mechanic standpoint. But a lot of times you just need to get something that you're gonna work with, you're gonna stick with it. For me, over the course of a year, about 
a year and four months doing this, uh, my potential distance has gone from 270 up to 327. Now that doesn't mean I hit it 327, it just means if I were to swing very hard, I could hit it that far. Realistically though, in playing, I have already hit a few 170 ball speeds this year with the driver, so that's pretty exciting as we go. So again, there's speed training that you can do. Also, if you figure out ways to swing faster, typically you swing it better. So just keep that in mind as you go. The other thing I like to have people do when we're working on speed, okay, is I like for people to do a drill where they work on swinging the club essentially as slow as they can, and they still need to try to hit the ball as solid as they can. So if I get up here, I've got a seven iron here, okay? So I'm gonna make a kind of normalist swing for me. Okay, didn't hit it great. That's all right. We're gonna see, because I chunked it, I'm not gonna get my impact either, but you're gonna see we've got our speed up there of 85 miles per hour. So a drill I like to do, especially if you're struggling to make good contact, is I like to go down and say, all right, hey, I want you to swing this club at 20% effort, okay? So you're gonna get up, you're gonna go back and go through and just hit a shot, okay? And you can see that ball traveled 50, or club speed was about 49 miles per hour. You could see where I hit the ball on the face on that one, hit it a lot better. And that's kind of the goal as we go through this. We need to be able to hit a semi-decent shot going really, really slow, okay? What you're gonna find when you do this is, hey, can I actually control it where, hey, I can actually put the club on the ball and get something that resembles a, you know, maybe I could actually play it, right? Now, not saying you would actually do this on the course, but I like to do that. If you can't hit the ball going slow, you are not gonna be able to hit it going fast, okay? I think that's something that people think, oh, I'm just gonna go ahead and swing away. Well, not necessarily, okay? You need to work on getting that speed. And then I'll have people work on bringing it up about 10% at a time. So if that was 20, I'm gonna to go to 30. Okay, hit the ground there, so I gotta try that again. You can see our impact location is gonna be way off because I hit the ground really early. Okay, speed was a little faster there. There we go, better. Hit that one pretty good. And we can see, hey, there we go. All right, let's see what that golf ball's doing. And again, can I control it? What you'll start to learn is you actually get a feel for your swing and what swing actually works the best to make good contact. It's a lot easier to feel that out when you go slow. So when you go faster, okay, I can hit the ball a little bit better because I know what it feels like as I'm slowing down. So getting control of that slow speed and controlling that I think is really, really important. It's also helpful, hey, I need to dial in a club, I need to dial things back. There we go, we're gonna do that. Now, one thing that you'll see when we see people hit full shots is pros are gonna be, if they're hitting a full shot, they're gonna be plus or minus three miles per hour with their club speed, okay? If they're doing a full intent, now that's subjective, but when they say, hey, I'm trying to hit a full one, like they're driving your range swing, they're typically gonna be within plus or minus three miles per hour. So that's something to keep in mind when you're hitting shots. If you're seeing it jump all over the place, there's probably something going on in the swing that's not letting it work, okay? So that's something you wanna keep in mind as you're going through this. Now, the last thing I like to look at when we were talking about club speed, again, I think it's important to work on this and understand how to control it because I mentioned that there is some shot making that comes into this. So you can see my shot there, um, hit it a little on the face, so my spin's gonna be a little low, but I've got 56.44 on my spin, ball carried 150, okay, all that. I'm gonna hit another one, because I, I didn't like how low I hit that on the face, but let's go ahead and let's do it. This is gonna be kind of a full intent seven iron. Okay, so you can see my shot there. Hit that one pretty solid, okay? So a couple of things that we're looking at, all right? We've got spin rate, 58.71. We're looking at launch. That seven iron launched 20 degrees in the air. Um, it also had a descent angle. If we take a look at that number, 
where what that is is what's the angle it's coming down it's coming down at 49.4 degrees so it's coming down fairly straight so that ball is able to elevate my height was 107 feet okay that's the, the apex of the shot and it spent a lot of time in the air you can also see the carry was 167 and then it hits pretty quickly 168 and it stops Okay, now what happens if I go ahead and I'm just gonna go down, I'm gonna call this an 80% swing. Okay, so gonna not really do much else except just swing a little smoother. Okay, hit that one very good as well. Okay, hit that one very good as well. Here's what happens as we go through this, okay? 80% spin, the speed's coming down a little. I went to 94 heights, so I came down about, you know, almost seven, eight feet, and my descent angle came down a couple degrees. Now it's at 47, it launched slightly lower, not much, but this ball is gonna not only carry shorter, but it's going to have a flatter flight. It's also down about 400 RPMs of spin. So as I start decreasing speed, what I'm going to see is a ball that is gonna not only travel shorter, but it's going to travel flatter, okay? So that's important because again, if we're like hitting into the wind, that's something you want. You wanna get the ball to travel flatter. So swinging easier, taking more club, that is a good idea. If I'm hitting to a back pin where I want the ball to come in flatter because I could land it in the middle of the green and have it bounce to the back and try to get close to the pin without trying to fly it over, that's a good idea. If I'm hitting to a front pin where I need to go over some trouble, have the ball come up high, land, and then have some extra spin to stop it, then I need to hit, hit something hard, okay? So I need to be able to ratchet up my swing speed to be able to go. So you need varying swing speeds all the time, and you need to be able to put the club face on the ball when you do those. So that's what I like to see as we go through. And I think that's what you're gonna to wanna to see as you're going through this too is, hey, if I'm able to adjust my swing speed, I'm going to be a better player. I'm gonna have a better shot variety and I'm gonna better understand what is going on as I'm looking at my swings. So all those are gonna be good reasons to go through this. So club speed is number five. Not gonna have as much detail and you know, hey, these are definitely gonna be things that I think most people, you're gonna be getting to this point when you're talking about shot making, stuff like that. And it's gonna be a really good indicator that, hey, I can't control my club speed. So for me, a lot of times, that's just indicators that other things are going wrong. When I'm teaching people, that's kind of what I look at. But it's something that will help you. If you have mastered some of the other keys I think this is going to be something that you want to look at as you start trying to become a better player. Really good ball strikers, really good players that can play in all types of conditions. They understand what speed does and they understand how to control the ball. That's what allows them to adapt when they need to. So something that's really good to try, something really fun, and it's one of my favorite drills is that drill where we step up in speed because it really lets you feel what's going on in your swing. So if you have questions about it, if you have questions about the entire series, let me know down in the comments below. But again, this has been a great series. Hopefully that's helped you and help you understand what to start looking for in your swing and what to start looking for in the numbers as you're looking at any of your launch monitors. So again, thanks everybody for tuning in. Click that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber and we will see you in future videos where we're gonna be out on the course and we're gonna be talking about playing and getting better, all of that good stuff. So I can't wait for that and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. So thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.